Hi guys, Lindsay here. Um, I'm going to quickly try and go through a tutorial on how to make these lovely cut files that Jennifer created for us subscribers. And you can print them out just as, or not print them out, sorry. <laughs> you can cut them out with your silhouette just as they are. Um, or you can manipulate them to do different things. And I'm going to hopefully be able to show you different examples of how I'm going to use these cut files. So you can either print them out exactly like they are and glue them on to your page. Um, obviously you would lose some of the page, so I would probably put these like on the back of a dashboard or um, let me see if I have an example here. Uh, sorry for the messy desk. I totally did not I don't keep my desk clean because I don't necessarily film on it, but right now it's the best lighting um, that I have in my place. So anyways, you could attach this to the back of one of your dashboards like this and then laminate it um, and it would stick out like that. Or what you could do is put it on the top. Um, again probably on the back ways and also you can manipulate the file to be whatever size you want so with a little bit of extra with a little bit of extra work you can get what you want from these basic files so I'm going to show you one how to cut them just as they are um, and use them wherever you want like I said it's it's probably easier to glue them onto the page that you want to put them on and then laminate them so that uh, these tabs are protected because they're pretty flimsy by themselves so it's probably better if you laminate uh, you don't have to cut all these little piddly um, sort of like divisions in each of them when you do when you laminate but um, it's really up to you how finicky you want to be with these but I would recommend just like trimming kind of around like nice and cleanly around them when you laminate it and then that way all the letters will stay um, really nice and firm and they won't they won't fold over especially if you do these just on like some cardstock, like some plain cardstock or anything like that. Um, like this uh, cardstock that is that has a texture to it. It's pretty flimsy. It's not as thick as some of the other um, scrapbook paper that we get. But um, so I just used one of the sheets. I think from I want to say June or July. I'm not too sure, but, um, sorry if you hear dogs outside, there's a bunch, there's like eight dogs outside right now. So anyways, um, I just picked that one because I wanted to play around with it and then show you. So I'm going to go ahead and flip you over to the screen and, um, hopefully I will be able to show you how I do this on silhouette and then um, show you some examples of of ways to manipulate the file to get what you want okay so I'll see you in a few minutes okay so I'm gonna try and do my audio recording at the same time that I'm doing the overall view of what we're doing because it's just easy <laughs> Um, so if you hear, sorry, if you hear background noises, it's because I'm just doing an audio recording on my computer and so it doesn't have a filter or anything like that. So, okay. So here are pretty much all of the cut files. I didn't print, I didn't bring in the school one, um, or the one that says school because I don't have anybody that's going to school and I'm not going to school. So I didn't really need it. Um, but you can bring in whichever files you want. I also took um, one of these files here and I duplicated it and I um, 
sorry, I duplicated it and then I deleted the 2017 and then I took this one and duplicated it and just cut out the month part and then I merged the two files together to create just a month one because I do like one that just says today and I like one that just says month. So I wanted to be able to create that without um, without going and finding new fonts and, and all of that kind of stuff. So I just really manipulated the files that we currently have um, to do that. So anyways, I'm not going to really get into that. If you would like a tutorial on how I manipulated the file to get the month, um, by all means ask and I can do a quick video on that. It's not super, super hard. It's just erase and erase and group the file together pretty much. <laughs> so, um, so what I'm going to do now is show you how to print your um, headers just as they are. So I've already printed today and month, so I'm not going to, by the way, anytime there's a cut file outside of your cut lines, which is the red line that goes around here, um, anytime that they're outside of that, it will not try and cut that. So if you want to play with as many as you want and keep the file open, you can totally do that. So that's why you can see all of the files on one side and then my cut, my cut file is over here or like where I'm going to be cutting is over here. So I'm also using a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and I didn't change that because I'm not going to be using the whole thing. I'm just going to do a couple and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to do one that says um, plan. I'm going to use the plan one. And I'm going to use the work one maybe. So you can, as, you can do as many of these images as you want. When you actually get them from Jennifer, they are grouped together. So when you select the file, if you right click on it, you can select ungroup and it will ungroup them. And then if you click somewhere else to deselect them all, then you can click on just the one you want and move it um, so that they're not all connected, that they're just connected to themselves and not two or three other pieces. Um, it's a great way though to have them when you first get them, but it's not necessarily necessary because you're gonna you're gonna use whichever ones you want, right? So I've just taken them all and made them separate. So um, for for this purpose, I have taken my silhouette. Now it's going to sync. It's going to want to sync. And as you can see, when you do that, when you say you want to send it to your cut file after you've chosen your two pieces, you can see now that there's a red line around everything. That's where it's going to cut. If you've never cut on a silhouette before, that's how it's going to cut. If that's not how you want it to cut, then you have to manipulate it further in order to produce what you wanted to cut. So in other words, you'll have to add your own cut lines. But for these files, because they're just black outlines, it's just going to choose the outline of your um, piece. And so wherever it's black, it's going to cut directly around that. And you also don't have to print these cut files before you cut you can just directly cut onto whatever you want because otherwise all you're doing is printing black so and you really don't want that so all you got to do is make sure that your files are inside the gray line and also inside the uh the red line to make sure that your cutting is going to go fine you can go into adjust your cut settings now this is it's really, every machine is different, okay? Um, it's hard to tell which, if you have already played with your silhouette, then it's great because you know how it's going to cut when you want to place, when you want to make a sticker, you know how it's going to cut when you want to use cover stock, you know, all, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I know my settings and you can try that, um, but it may or may not work for you. It depends. So I've chosen the heavy cardstock one, 
And my silhouette ratchet is set at three. I think it is. And so that's the little thing on the actual blade that you have to change. Um, I never change that. So it's always set at three. And then my speed is at one. And the reason why I have it at one is because the faster it goes, the more likely it is to make a mistake. So generally when I'm cutting, and because I'm not cutting bulk things, like some people cut stickers for a living, and sometimes they set it at two or three or four or seven, I don't know. But because they want to cut a little bit faster, I would prefer to have clean line, so I cut slower, which is why my speed is set at one. My thickness, I have set at 33. I uh, just found that that's a good thickness for cardstock. And I don't need to do a double cut with that thickness. I don't need to do track enhancing. I don't need to do anything else. So at this point, now I'm going to flip back over to my handheld video and show you guys how to um, how to load the paper into your silhouette and then how to cut. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to load it in and then on this screen here, all I'm going to do is hit send a silhouette. So I'm not going to jump back in and hit record on that part. I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to go ahead and hit send a silhouette. So I'll let you know when I hit that button, but at this point, I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut plan and work. And I'm going to cut it on the same cardstock that I showed you before, that blue. And we will go from there. Okay. Hi. Uh, so this is where we're at. I have put the scrap of paper onto the cutting mat. As you can see, you can see the cutting mat through the already stuff I already did. And I just pressed it down. Uh, so that it was nice and clean and sorry I'm trying to do this one-handed so uh, so I've lined up the outside of the cutting mat with the uh, cutting line or the line guide I guess it is and then I'm gonna hit load cut mat on the thing and it loads it in so now we're ready to hit cut and as I said before I'm just going to go ahead and hit send to silhouette and now it's going to cut. You can kind of see it there as I press unload and unload just pushes it out so that you can grab your file but you can see that it's cut out plan and work and now I'm going to try to do this one-handed so hopefully this works um, I don't normally film like this but my computer and where I actually film are far apart and so I can't actually f do film like I normally do. <laughs> um, so actually this isn't too bad, but uh, so as you can see, it's cut out the work one. Looks really nice. And the plan one. There we go. And all these little pieces here, before you use your cut mat again, just remove them. Uh, they just chip off with your fingernail or whatever. I have a little tool, but um, I'll, I'll remove them before I do my next one. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to put you back on the screen, and we're going to go back over, or we're going to go over some of the ways that you can manipulate the file um, to make them whatever, these things whatever size 
that you want and to conform to if you don't want just one of these little tabs that you have to glue on you can actually use this to print your whole page or to cut out your whole page from from some cardstock so we're gonna go ahead and do that and I'll probably use um, some of the planner cardstock this time uh, for that just so you can see uh, what I need to do. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do, and I probably won't do this on camera because it's pretty easy, is just measure the sheet of cardstock that you are actually going to use so that you know how big, um, how big, of, sorry about that, um, my phone said I've reached the maximum amount of time. So um, anyways, what I was going to say is that you you want to measure the cardstock that you're going to be using to make sure that it's large enough for what you're wanting. Now the bookmarks that I make, I don't necessarily need them to go all the way down to the bottom, and but I do want them to stick out on the top. And the cardstock that we were that we're going to be using, um, I'll have a measurement for that when I get back to the other screen. But um, I'm just going to measure it off camera and then I will see you back on the silhouette screen. Thanks. Okay, so we are back on this screen with the months and everything. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to manipulate the files to get um, anything you want, really. It's, it's really up to your imagination what you want. It's just a matter of manipulating the file to get what you want. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I've measured the planner cardstock and it's eight and a half inches tall by six inches wide. So we're going to go ahead and change this to reflect that so that we know how much room we have. So if you go up here to the this little thing here that says open the design page settings window and click on that you're going to change your width to six and you're going to change your height to 8.5 and just hit enter and that's now changed that um you're you can shut off the print border because you're not really printing anything so that's fine so that's not distracting but you do want to keep your cut border on um, just so that you know where the maximum amount is that your silhouette can cut. So, um, and this is a custom size, obviously. And so now that we have that set up, that's great. Now we can go ahead and figure out what we want to do with these things. And so what I'm gonna try and do is create a sheet that all you have to do is laminate it and hole punch it and you can put it in. You don't have to glue it on, you don't have to do anything. So basically what we're going to do is use the whole sheet of scrap of paper or car, um, sorry, planning cardstock and we're going to create some of the of these tabs using the full page. So in the planner itself and of course I don't have a ruler handy. Oh, maybe I do. Okay, the planner pages themselves are three and three quarter inches wide. By six and three quarter, approximately six and three quarters inches tall. But we also remember want to have it stick out the top as big as you want. So if it's six and three quarters to the top, and I want it to stick out about three quarters of an inch. So I really want my top mark to be seven and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna do the today one just to show you. So we're going to take this image and this image right now is four and one sixty-seventh 
uh, wide. And I don't believe I'm going to duplicate it. And the reason why I duplicated it is because then I still have the original file. So if something goes wrong, then I can just go ahead and grab it from up here rather than grabbing it from my library. Um, oh, and if you need to know how to uh, import to your library, if you just go in and create a new folder or even just go into your library, you can select your files. Um, like have them up on the screen as well. I don't have them up on screen at the moment, but ha have your files selected on the screen and then just drag and drop them into uh, into a new folder or into wherever you want to put them. Some people have specific folders. I just created a regular folder. I don't really need um, just for this purpose. I didn't really need to have to have anything special. So um, so with this file here, we're now going to go to the scale window. And I'm going to change the width to 3.75 because that's what um, that's what the width is for the planner pages for personal size. If you're doing them for um, for the other size, uh, for your A5 size, then you would want to make it pretty much as you want to make them as pretty pretty wide as you want them. So, like for for a bookmark, you're actually going to go skinnier than this, um, so then it actually than your pages, unless you want the whole page. I kind of want the whole page so that I can capture some of this beautiful print on one of these pages. So that's what I'm going to use. But you can go skinnier. So whatever width you want is the width you're going to put in. The width isn't going to change. It's the height that's going to change. So you basically want to scale your width first so that you know and then you're going to go into this box, draw a box, draw a rectangle, and you're going to go ahead and just draw a rectangle. And you're going to hit the fill button and go to black and fill it in with black. Of course, it's not going to do what I want it to do, right? Hold on. Okay. Let's back that up. So if you draw a box, ah, there we go. If you go to the fill button first and then select the color that you want, you can create any shape of box you want. Okay, I am, oops. Okay, I'm actually going to use the ones with the rounded edge because this has a rounded edge as well, so then it'll just make it easier. So, let's see what I wanted to do. So, draw a box. It doesn't matter what size the box because you're going to go in and edit. You're going to go in and edit it anyways. So, select your box after. So, you have to change this to this setting right here. And then select your box. And then go into the scale. And again, change your width to 3.75. And then place it over top of your today file. Okay. And then what you're going to do is this part here, you kind of have control over, but you kind of don't. Because you've shrunken it so that it fits width wise, but you haven't done anything to shrink it height wise. And you can if you want to. I'm actually just going to leave it because shrinking it length, or sorry, shrinking it height width wise, <laughs> sorry, actually shrunk it a little bit height wise. So I actually like how big it is. It's, I think it's just slightly over 
Okay, I think it's a little bit too, maybe it's too big. Okay, so let's actually shrink it just slightly. So I've just basically took in, taken the top pad. Sorry, this one also, you need to go into your lines and hit no line whatsoever. So the big box that you just created, you're going to go in and hit no line, which is this one right here. Okay. So now that you've done that, your today we shrunk it a little bit and you can move it off and just even see, like if I put it by this ruler, I wanted it to be three quarters of an inch, which it is. Okay. So we can move it back. And you can see, I'm going to put them together. You can also select them both and you can go in to how they line up. So like your alignment and you can, you're going to align right so that they're together to the, they're together um, vertically. You don't necessarily want to align sorry there's something going on outside um, you don't want to align any other way because it will merge the two sort of together you it'll disappear like I'll show you if you align left or sorry if you align yeah align to the right or you can align them to the center I should say yeah the center will center both of them and then, um, but if you did the align vertically and you did that, you can see that it disappears. So you want to definitely do it horizontally. Basically look at where the line is. So if the line is this way, it means it's going to move this way. Or sorry, it means it's going to move this way. And if the line is up and down, it means it's going to move this way when you align them. So we've done that. Um, I've also noticed that the edges here are just slightly smaller, so I'm going to try and make them match. So these little points here are to make your corners smaller so that they match. You see that a little bit corners, they match a little bit better. And okay, so now that that is done, this is three quarters of an inch, right? From the bottom of the O to the top of the O, or bottom of the letter to the top of the letter. Now this part, you want it to be as high as you want. Now we said it was 6.75. So we can go in and change the scale of that to 6.75. And then this one, we just have to slightly move in a little bit. looks like we just, you want them to match up so that when you merge them, they're, they're just one complete cut file. So you can also zoom in just to make sure that there's nothing sticking out on either side. It looks good, right? So now um, you're going to want to select everything. So just click and drag so that it selects both the today listing and your big block. And then you're going to right click on it and hit group. So that makes it all one piece, which is great. If you wanted to do this again, before you merge the two files, you would click on this one and duplicate it. Okay. So now we've duplicated that block. I'm going to put it over here and I'll zoom back out so you can see what I've done. Oops, that's too far. Okay, so what I've done is I've basically taken this block that I want to use in the future to make some of these other ones into a full page. And I'm going to put it up here because remember, it doesn't go anywhere but where it's cutting. If you want to save, 
Okay, so now we can go in and select these two and hit through. And if you want to save more of this page, you can now move this around wherever you want it. So if you want this to cut like way up here, go right ahead. If you want it to cut down here, if you're wanting, if you know where you want it to cut because of your image or because you're looking at your sheet, like I think of like, I don't know, approximately right there is where I want to cut. So we'll see what that does. But I'm just looking at the sheet with the sunflowers on it, and I want a little bit of the sunflower, the big sunflower, but I also want the other colored uh, flowers as well. So I've kind of moved it over just slightly from the edge. And so there we go. So now we can go ahead and go to the cut file, but look, oh, it's got more than one thing. So what we're gonna do, Ooh, I thought grouping got rid of that, but I guess not. So let's go back here. Okay. Take this file. We're going to weld it together. That's what we need to do. So if you weld it together, then there shouldn't be, there should only be one cut line. Let's see if I did it. Yay! Only one cut line. Okay, so see it changed the color of the cut line, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. It will cut um, whatever the red does is what it will cut. So you can see it's going to cut all around the today, and then it's going to cut this big sheet out here so that you can hole punch it and stick it in your book. Now, if you wanted to hole punch outside of this, so if you didn't want to hole punch into this, you wanted to hole punch out here, you would just make this skinnier in order to accommodate the hole punch file uh, or the hole punches and then what you would do is um, when you laminated it then you would just hole punch into the lamination which would be over here so you could do it that way as well um, it's really up to you how you want this to be I'm just gonna cut it just the way it is um, just so I can show you what it looks like inside um, inside this once we hole punch it and uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and load up the paper and I'll, I'll uh, see you in that uh, next section. Okay so I've gone ahead and loaded my cut mat and now I'm just going to hit start or send to silhouette and I'm going to go ahead and have it cut Now this paper is a little bit thicker than the last one, so hopefully it will cut okay. I didn't adjust any of the settings. And I always got to make sure there's room behind your silhouette for this. Because of course it goes all the way through the machine as you're doing this. So it's going to finish cutting, and you can see the cut file, or the cut line right there, as it's cutting. Okay, so it's done, so I'm going to hit unload, and I don't know, eh, you can kind of see it in the camera where it cut out the today and I'm going to go ahead and peel it I'm going to peel this part off first okay so there really isn't much left of this one really <laughs> so probably going to throw that away but um, if you used a bigger piece of cardstock like say you wanted to use one of the the scrapbooking card stocks um, that you can get in the scrapbooking kit or just as extra then sorry you'd be able to end up cutting more um, than 
Oh, I almost got the ladybug right in the O. <laughs> uh, so that's what it looks like, which is cool. You can see my messy desk up there. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hole punch this. And we will put it in and see if I can do this one-handed. Do, do, do. Now, it doesn't quite line up where I wanted it. Okay. So that's the top of the sheet. So I'm just going to line it up where the top of the sheet top of the sheet matches this hole. So right there. I must have just done my measurements just slightly wrong. But that's okay. It's all about playing. Anyways, I got all the holes regardless, as you can see there. And I'm going to open this up, which is really hard to do one-handed because you have to push both of those. And I'm going to slide it in. So now you can see, as soon as it focuses, there we go, that it is at the top of the page. It's a little slightly down a little bit more. So you can play with your settings a little bit if you know how big you want it to be then you can make sure that it's that that it's that height um, in total it might have shrunk a little bit when i when i did uh, this part of it and then i didn't compensate down here <laughs> so that could be why it's shorter but you know what shorter is fine because this is a bookmark anyways right like you're not actually using this for anything so um unless you are and then you'd want to make sure that you do um do some measurements and then just add slightly a little bit because you can always cut a little bit off manually um but you can't add any on so anyways there you go and there it says today and if i close up my book you can see that the today sticks out right there you could also do the same thing with these um with this cutting the whole sheet with uh, these tabs on the side, you would just manipulate the file so that it's turned and then put it wherever you wanted it on your larger sheet. So I hope that helps and I hope you really enjoyed that and I will see you in my next video. Bye.